One of the most common questions that I get asked when someone is looking to get into rowing is, Austin, should I go with the Concept 2 or should I go with Water Rower? And so in this video, I wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison of both machines, really talk in detail about both, so that way you can get a better understanding of both machines and which one is gonna be best for you. For those new to the channel, I'm Austin with Training Tall, and you can't tell on camera, but I am six foot eight. But training tall is not about how tall you are. I help you get the tips and strategies to help you take your fitness and health above the average, no matter how tall you are. And as we work through our discussion on water rower and concept two, covering all of these different topics up here, I'm gonna do my best to be as brutally honest as possible to give you the full picture of why these machines are so different. And again, which one is gonna be best for you. So let's get right into it, talking about the price and the structural design of these rowing machines. Now with water rowers, water rowers have a whole variety of different options, different models that you can use. And one of the big draws to water rower is that it's sort of a fashionable rower. They come in all different style of woods and designs to really help your rowing machine blend in with your environment. For instance, I'm on an orange water rower, fits well with the Orange Theory Rowing Studio, but they have a lot more home-friendly colors and designs, all ranging from prices as low as about $900, upwards of $1,600 plus, depending on what sort of design you get. And for some people, having your rowing machine look like a nice piece of furniture that can fit well even in your living room with the rest of your house, that can be a big draw towards water rower. Comparing that to the no messing around style of the Concept 2 rowing machines with the latest Model D being in a nice sleek black color, it still does look like a piece of gym equipment and doesn't come with these elaborate different styles and designs. But because of that, the Concept 2 comes in at one solid price of $900 new from the Concept 2 website. Now when comparing the size and the weight of these rowing machines, both these rowing machines are gonna take up around the same amount of space. But when it comes to the actual weight of the rowing machine itself, especially when you fill your water rower up with the appropriate water level amount, the water rower is going to weigh significantly more. But what's nice about the structural design of both machines is that you can stand both machines upright and sort of put them in the corner of a room. They're not going to hit the ceiling if you have standard eight foot tall ceilings. Now, while you can stand both machines upright, the Concept 2 has a really, really awesome feature where essentially the machine is broken up into two parts that piece together, which makes it really, really nice for transportation. For instance, if you wanted to bring your rowing machine to an outdoor space or just take it with you up on vacation, if you were driving somewhere and you have room in your trunk, the Concept 2 can just fit right in there. And with the water rower being one big, heavy thing filled with water um, and you know requiring a lot of assembly just to get it set up as it is, it's a lot less practical to transport this machine. So when we put both machines side by side, the water rower tends to be more expensive depending on the model that you get, but even the cheapest of water rowing models is around the same price as the Concept 2. And the water rower is gonna have a lot more assembly involved in setting up the machine and is way harder to transport or move around compared to the Concept 2. All right, now let's get into the fun stuff. Let's discuss how these two machines row differently. Now with the water rower, as implied by its name, your resistance in the machine is water-based, which is nice because it is a more quiet and soothing sound as you take your rowing strokes. Compared, of course, to the Concept 2, which uses air resistance and is significantly louder than the water rower. And so this is where it's really important to consider whether you live in an apartment or you live in a house. And if you have neighbors around you that are close to you, they're definitely going to be hearing your rowing machine if you go with the Concept 2. And the thing with rowing is as you improve and as you get better, as you row more efficiently, you're rowing harder, the machine actually gets louder. Here's a little comparison of how these two different machines sound. Pretty big differences in the sound between these two different machines, so it's really something to consider. Now regardless of the sound that these machines make, both machines have a very smooth and fluid flowing stroke feel. You would think that the stroke uh, on the water rower, because you're rowing through water, would be smoother, but Concept2 actually does a really, really nice job with their air resistance to still make the stroke 
feel smooth as you row. So that's definitely not a big point of contention and not something that I would really worry about. Now when it comes to changing the resistance of your rowing machine, with the water rower, it's a little bit more involved because you have to add more water to your rowing tank in order to increase the resistance. Whereas with air resistance, all you have to do is change the damper setting, which is on the side of the Concept2, allowing you to very quickly and very easily adjust the resistance that you feel when you're rowing. Now to be totally honest with you, I'm not one to advocate a variety of different rowing resistances, but once you get it to a resistance that works for you, you don't really need to change it that much anyway. But it is nice that Concept2 has that option to quickly change it compared to water rower. Now, if you took a seat on a water rower, took some rowing strokes, and then you went over to a Concept2, sat down, strapped in, and take some strokes as well, you would feel a difference on how your body feels while you're sitting and rowing. And this is where I'm gonna get a little bit specific um, to discuss these differences, but it's really important to consider, um, especially if you have a larger midsection, if you're someone who deals with more frequent back problems, etc. Essentially, on the water rower, the distance between where your feet sit and where your butt sits is much more close to being in line with each other than on the Concept2. So essentially, with my feet in this position, my knees are higher, it's harder for me to get a proper lean forward at the front because the seat and the feet are sitting so in line with each other. Now, comparing that to a Concept2, when you have your foot plates essentially adjusted the same way, the foot plates are sitting significantly lower than the seat. And while having the foot plates lower, that allows you to sort of get your knees out of the way and allows you to more comfortably get a good lean forward at the front end of the rowing stroke. And when it comes to keeping our back safe, etc., sometimes having this high level of the feet and the seat can tend to lead to back issues if you have trouble sitting forward. And if you have a larger midsection, it's even more challenging to sit forward. It's a little bit more comfortable to do this on a Concept2. However, I will say that the seat on the water rower feels just a little bit more comfy than the seat on the Concept2. But what's nice about both machines is that you're also welcome to get a seat pad that you can sit on that makes it even cushier for your bottom. And both machines have a nice rowing handle as well. I would say that the water rower has a much more textured grip. It feels a little bit easier to grip the handle and just biomechanically feels a little bit better as well. It rests better at the base of your fingers and the top of your palm. Compared to the Concept2 handle, which is a very hard plastic, I would say that that handle still is not a bad handle by any means, but just holding the two handles, the water rower handle just feels a little comfier. Now, both rowing handles are most likely going to be causing some hand blisters and calluses over time, depending on how much rowing volume that you choose. Of course, you're welcome to wear gloves. I don't necessarily recommend gloves, but of course that is an option. So as we've learned, both rowing machines row quite a bit differently. The water rower is going to be a lot quieter than the Concept2 is, but both machines still feel smooth as you row. Biomechanically, the Concept2 has the foot plates and the seat better set up for those with a larger midsection to help you get a more comfortable lean forward and swing back each rowing stroke. It's much more challenging to change the resistance on the water rower compared to the Concept2. Both the seat and the handle on both machines are fine. They're not deal breakers by any means. Now let's move on to practicality. And this is where I wanna get really serious and I need you to be serious with yourself and really think about what you're trying to get out of rowing. Because one of the most important tools that you can use to help you progress your rowing is your rowing monitors. And on the Concept2 and the water rower, the monitors are drastically different. The monitor on the water rower, I'll admit, is a little archaic. It's very old school looking and feeling and lacks a lot of features compared to the Concept2. This monitor does let you program your workouts though if you were to program a specific time or a specific distance. It reports different metrics like the pace per 500 meters. It reports even watts, calories per hour, even things like miles per hour. You can even track your distance in not just meters but in miles or in stroke count as well. And while the water rowing monitor does provide you with enough of the information you would need 
during a single time or single distance workout, it still lacks a lot of the different features that the Concept2 can offer you. Features such as the force curve that shows you your force distribution throughout each and every stroke, the ability to program a whole variety of different intervals and workouts, as well as showing you all the other metrics that the water rower shows you. One of my biggest frustrations with the water rowing monitor is even in the middle of your workout, as you change intensity, if you're shifting intensity throughout the workout, the monitor lags behind and fails to report an instantaneous change in your intensity. It's something that you'll have to really row to experience but the Concept2 gives you instantaneous reports of changes to your intensity. If you are going really, really hard and then you go really, really soft, the Concept2 will tell you the moment that you went soft. Whereas on the water rower, if you were going really hard and then you backed off on pressure entirely, it would still be reporting that you're going fast and would take about 20 to 30 seconds to actually report that you have really slowed things down, which can be super frustrating when you get into rowing workouts, such as the ones found in my rowing eBooks that have you changing intensity constantly to keep you engaged and keep you focused on a whole variety of different things. The water rower monitor is good at kind of doing one single distance or one single time, which over time can get boring. And then you have to consider well, what are you trying to get out of your rowing machine? Are you looking to just throw it in with other, you know, hit training that you do? You know, just sit down and row for 30 minutes or whatever? In that case, water rower might be the way to go. But with Concept2 offering, you know, weekly challenges, seasonal challenges where you can compare how you row to everyone else and considering that all of the world records are performed on the Concept2, it really is the gold standard in reporting the data and really seeing where you stand compared to everyone else. Very common thing with the water rower is that the monitor tends to report faster intensities than the Concept2. For instance, if you rode a 2000 meter row on a Concept2 and you finished with seven minutes finish time, if you did that on a water rower, it would more likely report you at a six minute finish time. And so if you're looking to get involved in the rowing machine community of different workouts and different challenges, Concept2 is the easy winner here. And essentially, water rower is for recreational rowing for the most part, or singular bouts of intensity and that's about it. If you're looking to really get involved in rowing workouts, rowing training plans, etc., you're gonna wanna go with Concept2. And I'm not trying to be mean to the water rower, it just is what it is. Now, last thing I wanna talk about here is the durability of these machines. And both machines are very durable. This water rower that I'm sitting on right now has close to four million meters on it. It's had a lot of maintenance done on it over the course of the many years that it's been around, and I would argue that the water rower does require a little bit more upkeep than the Concept2 does. The Concept2 really is built to last. And even with just minor upkeep every few months throughout the year, that thing will last you decades upon decades. And I would say from a money standpoint and a longevity standpoint, Concept2 is the better machine to go for. So the big question, water rower or Concept2? Guys, it really comes down to what are you trying to get out of your rowing experience? If you're looking just to row recreationally, water rower is a great way to go. It's a nice sleek design that can you know, help with a variety of different styles. But if you're really serious about using rowing for more than just rowing a single distance, rowing a single time, you know, just doing sort of the cookie cutter workouts, if you're really looking to get involved in your rowing machine, really invest in the power of the highest calorie burning machine out there, Concept2 is almost guaranteed the way to go. Other than the loudness of the machine, which I would say is one of the biggest consider points um, that can make or break your decision. But if you can get away with the loudness of the Concept2, in the end, that's gonna be the machine to go for, the machine that I would recommend between the two. So I hope that answered the big question, the big question that I get all the time. Those are my thoughts on the differences between these two machines and I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below if I missed anything, if there's anything that you would add based off of your experience with either of these two machines. You would not only be contributing to the conversation, but you're gonna be helping a lot of others out as well. So please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you're interested in more rowing and fitness content for me. I've got an online training platform with daily and weekly follow along workouts with me over on HIT Plus. 
I've also got my rowing eBooks with four and eight week training plans to help you get started with your rowing machine, whatever rowing machine that you do have. And then I've also got my private coaching groups that I run every month, Row 20. If you're looking to work one-on-one -on -one with me so I can help you with your form and guide you through 20 days of live exclusive workouts, with me together so we can get to know each other. You can sign up for that down over at my website, trainingtall.net. That's all I got for you. So thanks so much for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you liked it. Leave a dislike if you hated it. And I'll see you in the next video.